Good morning and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are all in good health. We ask that all present respect the instructions given by our ushers and the guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers, maintaining a distance of two meters, and wearing face masks when entering, leaving, or moving within the church. At the time of Holy Communion, we will give you further instructions, and at the end of Mass, we ask that you exit through the main doors to the back of the church. 
Our presider today is Father Cecil Critch, and our gathering hymn is 557 in the CBW. Kindly stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries on this, the last day of 2020. And many people will say, thank God, it's the last day of 2020. So as we begin a new year this evening and tonight, uh, we ask the Lord's blessings on us as we uh, have a new beginning. To prepare ourselves and to celebrate these sacred mysteries today, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts and to forgive us for the times we have failed to be a light in the darkness of our world. We ask the Lord's forgiveness. on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray, almighty and ever-living God, who in the nativity of your Son established the beginning and fulfillment of all religion, grant, we pray, that we may be numbered among those who belong to him, in whom is the fullness of human salvation, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of John. Children, it is the last hour. As you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. From this we know this is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But by going out, they made it plain that none of them belonged to us. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and all of you have knowledge. I write to you, not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and you know that no lie comes from the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. response to the song, Declare the Marvelous Works of the Lord Among All the Peoples. Wrong. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, and the glory of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. So this is New Year's Eve, and at midnight tonight, a new year begins. And this past year, 2020, has been, let's say, has had its challenges with COVID-19 pandemic and all of its impacts on the world and all the effects of that in our lives. But a new year is a time of new beginnings. And as we move on from the winter solstice that we've moved on on December 21st, the daylight is increasing every day. I'm sure you've noticed that. The Gospel reading for this New Year's Eve is itself a beginning. It's the opening verses of the Gospel of John. And the first verse of that Gospel reading says, In the beginning was the Word. Before all things came into being, before anything was created, the Word was. The Word was God, and the Word became flesh, became human in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. He is the light shining in the darkness, the true light that enlightens everyone. And God spoke to us through the life of Jesus and through his death and resurrection. It is, I guess, the greatest act of love ever told. He took on human flesh and made his dwelling among us. He came to give us the gift of being God's sons and daughters, the gift of grace. He came to reveal who the Father is. What an amazing mystery of love. The Gospel passage mentions that God gave those who accepted Jesus as the light the power to become children of God. And we know that Jesus came to reveal that God wants us to be his adopted sons and daughters. We receive this gift as we know at our baptism, and we strengthen it through the sacraments and the life of prayer as we go in our journey of life. And the Father and the Son together have sent us the Holy Spirit to help us and guide us and accompany us always and to empower us to witness to the light. The Holy Spirit enables us to keep hearing the word of, that is Jesus in his, all its riches, to hear it as a word for us here and now. At the beginning of this new year, we invite the Holy Spirit to open us up more fully to the truth of this word that God spoke in the beginning and that became flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. We ask the Holy Spirit to empower us to be a light in the darkness of our world, to illumine the world illuminate the world with the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our prayers of intention for today, let us offer first of all a prayer for Holy Father Pope Francis and Peter Archbishop and all those who lead and guide our church that this uh, new year may be a special time of grace as we dedicate our year to St. Joseph and to families. So we pray for those intentions. We pray to the Lord.
Let us pray, continue to pray for peace in our world, that this new year may be a time to, to make peace a bit more of a priority in our world, that the governments of the world may work towards peace and reconciliation among all peoples, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all the sick recommended to our prayers, especially our parishioners like Peggy Reed and Kevin Dormady and all those, and Jim Foley and all those who are recovering in hospital and at home, we pray to the Lord. For all the beloved deceased today, we pray for Alphonsus and Dana Hennessy, Frank Fowler, we pray for Richard and Clotilde Singleton. For all those and our loved ones who have gone before us, we pray to the Lord for your own intention today. We pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the graces and blessings you give us every day. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray, O God, who gave us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, that by partaking of the sacred mystery we may faithfully be united in mind and heart. Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with all the angels and saints we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are claiming. Holy, holy, of all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs with them to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 And we pray with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And we share the peace of Christ now with one another.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and prudent, respectful manner, we ask that you please respect and adhere to the following instructions. Instead of the individual attestation, Amen, by communicants at the time of receiving Holy Communion, there will be one general attestation for everyone before the distribution begins. Those wishing to receive Communion are asked to ensure their face mask is properly in place before coming forward. Remain in their pew until invited forward by the ushers. Maintain social distancing of two meters in the communion line. Sanitize your hands before receiving communion. As communicants approach the front of the communion line, we ask that you sanitize your hands, bow towards the host in silence, receive the host in your hands, move to the side to consume the host, return to your pew as directed by the ushers. Any person who cannot receive Holy Communion in the hand is welcome to come forward to receive a blessing. The body of Christ. the bread of heaven and the cup of love outpoured, we proclaim your birth, Emmanuel, child of Mary, Christ the Lord. The house of bread rejoices, singing heaven's great refrain. Let us join them in their glory and give glory to God's name. As we taste the bread of heaven and the cup of love Join our voices with the angels high. 
Let us pray. May your people, O Lord, whom you guide and sustain in many ways, experience both now and in the future the remedies which you bestow, that with the need of solace of things that pass away, they may strive with ever deep and trust for things eternal, through Christ our Lord. Now prayer to Mary for help and protection during the pandemic. O Mary, you always shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, for that is in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings, and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross, the joy of the resurrection. Under your protection we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Just a reminder, our Mass for New Year's is at 5 o'clock this evening and at 9 tomorrow morning at 11.30. And as well, on Saturday evening, after Mass between 7 and 9, there will be confession and adoration, uh, the usual monthly summit we have here. It's a beautiful evening. You can come for 15 minutes or a half hour, two hours, enjoy some beautiful reflective music, uh, and uh, offer adoration to the Lord. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And, with and may Almighty God bless all of you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace now, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Have a great day. Our missioning hymn, 320 in the CBW, Angels We Have Heard on High. 